On today's episode of Fit Happens, we'll be looking at some exercises in the gym. We'll be looking at body image and also trying to work out what the elementary approach to fitness is all about. Hi, and welcome to Fit Happens the show where we help you increase your fitness levels and reduce your fatness levels. So Chris, tell us about fitness, what you're up to at these days. Uh, at the moment, fitness is really a, a full-time occupation for me. Um, I'm looking after my own fitness and trying to help as many other people as I can. For my own fitness, I'm usually in the gym twice a day, first thing in the morning for, for cardio, and later in the day, I'm doing some, some weight training. But I have to fit that around the time I'm spending with clients because I've got around about 15 to 20 different personal training clients. And I advise them on a one-to-one -one basis in a few, few different gyms and a few different locations. Do you do some working out with your clients? Yep, some of my clients, we do shared workouts with them as, and, and other clients, it's very much instruction from me. Um, but as well as on a one-to-one -one basis, I also try to get the fitness message out to a large number of people uh, at one go, and I do that through fitness radio and writing articles and the occasional presentation job as well. Brilliant. Tell us about the fitness radio. Well, I actually present on a radio station called Marlow FM, uh, which is based in, in South Buckinghamshire, and I have a two-hour, two-and-a-half-hour, actually, show every Tuesday morning uh, dedicated to health and fitness, and I try to get imp interesting guests on there who can talk about their own fitness lives and pass on the message to as, as many different people as they, as they can. Fantastic. Thanks, Chris. Thanks. Hi, and welcome to the Fit Happens Gym. I spend a lot of my time in gyms these days, but I'm aware that lots of people don't, and perhaps gyms seem a bit intimidating with lots of different types of equipment doing lots of different functions. Well, what I want to do today is to show you how lots of these bits of equipment all, in fact, can do the same thing, depending which piece of equipment you choose. It's got slightly different uh, nuances to it and slightly different emphasis. I'm going to do that by doing an exercise called the chest press. It develops the pectoral muscle. And to help me do that, I've got a friend of mine, Mark. Mark and I have been to the gym a couple of times in the past, but not for a few years. So it's going to be good to show Mark how he can work on those chest muscles by using different types of equipment. So Mark, welcome to the Fit Happens Gym. So do you have a big history with working in gyms? Not really, Chris. Uh, a couple of years ago, I had a little go at the gym, but I find it all very confusing, quite intimidating. So I'd appreciate a little bit of a tour just to help me understand how it all works. Well, that's exactly what I want to do today. Um, we're going to do that by looking at one particular exercise, which is the chest press. And I'm going to show you how the different types of equipment, which as you say is confusing and intimidating. Let me show you how those different types of e uh, equipment can all be used to the same common goal of working the chest. OK, great. Sounds good. So the first thing I'm going to use is this thing here. It's a chest press machine. It's a seated chest press machine. Um, it's called a fixed path machine. Now what I mean by fixed path is you can't actually get this wrong. You can't injure yourself doing it, or if you, if you can injure yourself, it's very, very hard to injure yourself doing it, because the, the weights are secured, the, the, the movement, your arc of movement is very restricted, but it enables you to focus specifically on the chest muscles. So let me show you how that works. So the first of all, you need to select the weight you want to use. So the first time you come to a gym, you need to experiment on this to get the weight that's right for you. So I've chosen a weight that I know is, is uh, okay for me, and I think it's gonna be all right, all right for you as well. Okay. Um, the hands go on here, and most of these machines have a variable seat height. So you wanna have the seat height such that the handles are at mid chest. So this particular machine, you can move the seat up and down, okay. but I've already preset it for myself so that the handles here are at mid chest level. If I was very tall, then I'd move the seat further down. Okay. This particular maker machine has also got a handle here that I can use to adjust the, the starting position. But that's about right for me as well. So having got the, the setup of the machine correct, having got the handles correct, having got the weight correct, what I'm going to do is going to push out. Now, some people say, should you have your hands gripped around the bar or open bar? It doesn't make any difference. Mm -hmm. Whatever you prefer. Push out to the full extent and then lower back to the beginning. I say lower because the weight stack is moving downwards in that particular phase of the exercise. That's the raise phase, the weights are going up, mm -hmm. and this is the lowering phase. So I'm going to do somewhere between 8 and 10 of these. In a normal workout that's what I'd do, okay. to see the, uh, the workings. I'm only going to do about 3 or 4 for you, for you today. So do you want to give that a whirl? Yeah, let's yep. do it. 
So you're much the same height as me, so I don't think the seat height needs changing. I think we're about the same height, aren't we? Yeah, it's about mid-chest, which is good. So do you want to start further back? It looks about the right position for me, so I don't think you need to move that yellow handle. Does that look okay? Looks okay to me. Yep. Push out and come back. Now you need to exhale as you push out, so push out, so exhale and exertion. That's it. And back in. Exhale again. Back in. Good. A couple of other notes, keep on going the next, keep on going with the exercise. A couple of other notes, don't let the weights come to rest between each repetition. So don't let the weight stack actually touch, keep the weights moving all the way through. That's great. And finally, if you can think about it, don't let the arms go totally fully extended. When the arms are fully extended, then the resistance has been taken by the bones, by the skeletal system, rather than by the muscles. So just stop a little bit before that. The pace is fine. You should be pushing uh, quicker outwards and slower towards you. So in this case, the weights are coming downwards, so I say lower, slower. So you do quickly on the raise phase and you lower, slower. Well, this is a cable machine. Uh, it's a variable cable machine because you can adjust the height of the cables. So if you look over here, you see we've got a ratchet with holes on it. And this particular attraction, contraption here can be moved up and down. Same on this side. So you move this up and down depending on where we want it to be. So at the moment it's set to level 13. I can move the cables higher for different exercises and lower for other exercises. Okay. So there's, there's some variance there in terms of the, the setup of the machine. So depending on what exercise you want, you set the, the cable to be the correct height. What we're we gonna do with it, we have to set the weight. Unlike other things we've been doing uh, with the machines, here we have to set on two places. We set on this side and on that side. Choose the weight we want. If you excuse out, get out the way slightly, I'll show you the exercise we're going to take. Okay. There's lots of different handles we can have on these. We're going to use these simple grip handles, leaning forwards. We're going to push this in a press motion outwards and back. So again, we're using the standard rules of exhaling on exertion. So it's come back more slowly. So it's raised face is quick. That's the, the weight's going up and we're lowering more slowly, lower, slower. Okay, so why is this machine different? Well, uh, it's, it's, there's room here for a little bit more control on your part because the handles do move around a little way. So you need to put a bit more control in your movements to keep them and you need to lock the arms in place as you, as you press the arms out and you bring them back. But it's still a safe machine because if you actually let go of the weights, if there's a, a problem, then all that happens is a loud noise, no one gets hurt. Do you want to give it a try? Yeah, it looks like fun. So grips on there. Now remember not to lean the body forward and backwards, so keep the body locked. It's very important in all exercises, and this is a, a prime example, that the only, the only parts of the body that should be moving are those parts involved in the exercise. It's good to have one leg forward, gives you additional stability. Uh, some people try to do this with legs side by side, it doesn't work so well. You're breathing very well, exhaling on exertion. Good press motion. Well, Mark, we've looked at, I think, five different ways of doing the chest press exercise, and the whole reason for that was to show you how different bits of equipment can be used to do the same uh, exercise. Was that of interest? Yeah, very much so. I feel more confident now coming into the gym and how to use all this equipment. That's excellent. Good. I'm very pleased it helped. This is going to be the scissor stretch. It's also known as the split and be able to teach you how to do the splits if you do this enough. Uh, simple as keeping your toes pointed up towards the sky and just reach down in front of you as far as you can. Feel a nice stretch in the groin area. Yep. Good stuff. And try and keep your toes pointed up towards the sky. Hold it for about three to five seconds. Good stuff. And then up. And then we're going to come down to one side, so you're going to reach down as far as you can. If you can only get to the knee, get to the knee, but if you can get all the way down to the toe as you can, good stuff. Hold it there for three, two, one, and up. And what we do with one side, we do with the other side. So we come down to your left toe, your left heel. Good, good, good. Three, two, one, good. So now you should be feeling that nice stretch in the groin area. So we're gonna come back out in front of us again. And should be able to go a little bit further this time because we've uh, gone to either side. And the reason it's known as a splits stretch is because if you do this enough, you should be able to take the legs out slightly wider and eventually get to be able to do 
what's known as the splits, and that's known as the scissor stretch. So, in terms of nutrition, for rowing before and after a race, what's better for you, carbs or protein? Well, rowing is actually an exercise that involves both strength and cardiovascular activity. And as such, I think both protein and carbs would help you in your performance in rowing. Certainly some carbs beforehand. I wouldn't go rowing uh, having had no carbs that day. And certainly after the exercise as well, you'll be using up a lot of muscle glycogen during your rowing exercise. So you want to top up those reserves by having some fast carbs immediately after the exercise. As for protein, well, I'm a big believer in protein all day long, in fact. Certainly if you're doing some exercise like a, like a healthy row, then make sure you have protein a little bit before and certainly some after, as you would with any other workout.